Well, hello there, it's Wayne Robson here with Nuke for 3D Artists. Uh, this is going to be the first on probably two or three videos on the subject of camera projection. Um, some people have problems with it. We're going to start really easy. Now, one confession, um, I did actually record this video before. And, uh, I think it's under here. Um, and I was not happy with the video the way it recorded. And of course, it's going to pop up in the monitor. But... Um, so the, the bottom line is, didn't really like the way it came out. Um, so if you'll see a one later on about group nodes, and it'll use this and reference that other tutorial. But the bottom line was it just turned out a bit crap, really. Um, and it was overly confusing. So I've took this right way back down to basics. Right, this is just simply a planet that I rendered out in view um, about two hours ago before I'm big and sony for my dinner. I've just stuck a little grade on it there just to darken it up uh, for the moment because it comes out a little bit light in linear space. So we don't need to really worry about that. Um, now, what you do when you're doing camera projection is you're taking a Project 3D node, right? And you connect that to the texture. And this will allow you to project that onto 3D geometry, be that geometry that's coming from a 3D app like Maya, Max, um, coming from Modo or wherever you like, light wave, things like that, whatever you want. Um, even something, if you want to be complex, you could take something like, say, a city engine and have a matte paint to paint over the top of it and then reproject onto low res geometry, all sorts of stuff. Camera projection is one of the mainstays of visual effects, regardless on whether you're talking about the huge firms uh, like ILM and Weta and NBC and DNEG, all the tiny firms, you know, that maybe got three guys in the 3D department. It is, without doubt, one of the big ones. So we have our Project 3D node. We need a camera to project from, which I'm going to just give it a name so that I know it's a projection camera. We'll see that there. We're also going to need a scene node. Like that. Now, once we've got the scene node and the camera, we need a scan line renderer. This is really important, otherwise you will see nothing. So our camera, we're going to put there, we're going to put a scene down here, just to try and make it, like the flow makes some sense, and I'll set the scan line render over here. First of all, we want camera connected to scene. Now this has got a camera thing, guess where that goes? That goes right up here, right? If we hold down the control key, we get the little dot things and we can make it look nice. The OBG slash SCN goes to scene. Now this camera one, also goes to the projection camera, right? That's very important to the projection camera, not any other cameras in your scene. Right, all we have at this stage is everything set up. All we need is some geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tab, and not a scene, or what the hell are you doing, Robson? Sphere, like that, and we're going to connect that to the project 3D, right? So currently we have that there. We also have to make sure, uh, sometimes I put a spherical transform on just in case I need it later. Probably won't need it, but if I do, then you know it's there. So, of course it's transform G, oh you idiot. You'll have to excuse me, because it's been one of those days today, right? So we'll put that there, and then we'll connect this to the scene, so we have that in there. Right now, if I jump into 3D space, you'll see that that is taking up exactly the same space as the camera. So let's move this back a bit, and you will see, if I just go in here like this, it's starting to project on it, right? So what we've got to do, the worst pain in the arse with this is if this is, say this was to composite, do some lighting like we'll do in a bit, um, you'd want to make sure that any edges of this planet were correct and correctly placed so that it didn't end up. Um, I'm going to make sure I get this right. If I stop talking, it's just because I need to get this right. Right, we'll put that as um, 0.1. Let's see. That, that, right, okay. Now I know where I'm at. I've just got to make this the right sort of size. But. Oh. I think we'll just go with 1.01. .01. Is that big enough? Oh, it's still too big. So we'll put another zero in. Yep, yeah, that'll do. So now, if I go into here and I view the scanline renderer, 
we can see it's got an alpha channel. Now it does have on here, we're not quite lined up, right? So what we can do is go into here, just press H so it's in full screen, and then I can try and get that right. Oh, nearly, 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 rubs on nearly the bump, right? Yeah, so there we go. And it's inheriting the alpha channel from the, um, the image up here. So if I view that, there's an alpha channel in it, right? All right, so there we go. That's a basic projection, but it's not really up to much. First of all, I need to change uh, my scene settings. I'll just go to a standard 1920 to 1080. So it's got a bit of the framing there. Uh, you can see that it's cut that off nicely, all right? So we could look through the camera and see exactly what we've got on here. I hit the tab key when I'm in the viewport, hovering over the viewport, it'll swap backwards and forwards. So we've got that there. Now the first thing we're noticing, uh, one, there's no bloody stars in the thing. Two, this edge is bloody terrible. So what we need to do is under here, we put um, an edge blur, right? Connect it to here. And then I'm gonna view it through there. And I'm going to try and increase this a little bit just to blur the edges, give it a, like an atmospheric effect. I'm not going to spend too long on it because, to be honest, I don't really can't be asked. Can we could give it a bit of a tint like that, give it a bluish tint. We could increase it and get some sort of atmosphere like that going. That's maybe a bit too much, but yeah. So we've got a bit of an atmosphere thing going on. Maybe that's a bit big. We don't know. It's if I give it enough, I don't want to spend. 10 minutes tweaking the damn thing. Um, so we've got the edge taken care of now. Now, what I'm going to do is add a few more bits and pieces, all right? First of all, um, I'm going to, but if I just bring in a merge node and I'm gonna set this to matte because we're gonna put a background in, all right? Now that is at the front, so that's gonna be on the A channel. The B channel, I'm simply going to copy across from under the project and put it into there. Now we will notice immediately when we view this, it's gone all sorts of crazy. What's going on? And you can see this is actually some crazy bloody thing I've got from online. Now, um, if you stick a reformat onto it, then boom, we've got rid of the problem. We basically reformatted it to 1920, 1080, okay? Maybe we need to add a bit of glue onto it. And we'll try and take this a little bit further. I don't want to just cut the video dead, you know. And I will have a look and just see what I can do with the glow. Um, I'm going to put it about there-ish. And we need a brightness of, well, that's all right. Uh, 15. And hopefully now, well, that's a bit too much. Let's just take this back a wee bit. We just need a little bit of glow on that. Um, one thing I do do, as a matter of course, on anything CG, is add a defocus on the way, because right now, this is a razor sharp, right? So if I, there, you can see that's, you can see all the problems in the bloody render if you look at it. So what I'm gonna do with this, just simply, simply put that on there, it takes a bit of the CG off, sometimes put it on 0.1. Obviously, if I was using anamorphic footage, I would have that set at 0.5, but we're dealing with square pixels, so, which most renders are putting out that you'll be doing, I imagine, yourself, unless it's in production. Um, we'll put that as one. Now, there's a few things you can do to make this look a bit more like a shot, and less like something you've just done in Photoshop. One is bringing a saturation node. There are many ways of doing this, and adding like an atmospheric effect. Um, stick that in there. Now, the saturation, I'm gonna bring it down very slightly. I don't want to bring it down all the way to black and white. Neither do I want it always saturated. I want it just enough that it looks more like you'd see up a NASA shot or something, the colouring. Um, I would then stick a grade node on it. And the grade node, you can do a few things with it. Right? You could do a slight lift on it like that, but just uh, you see how it'll just lift it slightly because we don't want the blacks being completely black. Right. So there we go, we've got now, we've got a shot. Oh, the start of a shot. So we're gonna add some other stuff onto it. Um, now, if you think particularly that the stars 
all particularly right. You know, you can stick a mirror node in the middle, right? And you can flip this sort of horizontally or horizontally and vertically and find something that works nicely. Right, that sort of star looks nice down there. So we'll leave that there. Do a bit of a tidy up on your nodes, make sure everything works and is fine. So all this stuff from that red box up is our projection setup. All the stuff below it is the easy stuff. Now what I'm going to add is I'm going to add another camera. Right? In fact, sometimes it makes more sense to copy the projection camera because you know that's already set up. So we'll put it into the scene, right? Now at the moment, the camera that it's rendering is this one. Now if I change this over, you're not going to see any difference right right now. But what I can do is I can go into 3D and find this camera and I could zoom it in a wee bit, you know. Let's just zoom it in just a wee bit like that. And maybe see if we can tilt it just a wee bit like that. Oh. The only thing I, I dislike in me is these transform things are not very good, in my opinion. So we've reframed it slightly and it's a bit further in. So I'll hit tab on that. And you can see now we've got this whole thing going on. Let's add a light. Now if we have a light here, and we put it in the scene, watch, you can go boing, you can't see bloody shit. Now I'm going to put a linear fall off on here. Um, I'm going to try an intensity of 10. And then I'm going to find a placement for this light here. So at the moment it's there. We don't need it to be there. We want to put it somewhere else. We want it a bit further away. Well, I've got to see what this looks like. Let's try it 25. Yeah, it looks a bit nicer. Right. So we've got him there. But what we want to do is effectively move this round like that and sort of create a bit of a sort of animation going on the light. So first of all, I'm on frame one. I'm just going to set, you know, key on all, on all the knobs just because I'm lazy. And then I'm going to go to like, well, we'll see a 50 because we don't want something that's going to take too long. Then I'm going to put this along to like that. I just want to see where it's at on here. We can maybe go a bit further. Like that. Yep. In fact, we'll even bring it in a bit like that. If we do here. Right, so we've got some animation here. So it goes from there all the way to here. We could even, if we wanted to be really clever, I'm going to change this from projection camera to short camera. Like that. Now this one, we have um, currently like that, right? so it's there. There it is, right? That's how, what we can see. Now I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to set the key, we will back the first frame first of all, on all the knobs, right? So all knobs, boom, right. Now we're going to go to 50, and then I might move it across slightly and maybe do another rotate on it like that. Let's bring it across. So now our shot camera looks like that. So we've got a thing going on. So it's basically going right. So let's just uh, get back to the first frame, let it cash everything out and see what happens. Now we could do some more um, fancy stuff on this if we really want to. It's Take it as far as you like, but it's basically a ball and an image. So there we go, and it's it's a bit fast, but you get an idea, right? Um, another plan you could do is um, you could use a light wrap like that. So what we would do with a light wrap is we would have this. Um, so in here, I will put that in there, and I will take it from that, right? And then, if we have a look at this first of all, we could intensity up it, use doing the right wrap, maybe the glow, uh, luminous base wrap. We have just just that on its own, right? And it adds a little bit of something to it. 
So there you go. Um, simple as that, really. You know, and in case you're wondering, the, the, I always do a, a, a test draw on these, and that one's basically exactly the same. Well, this is a bit slower. And only has one camera. So, yeah. Exactly the same stuff. Well, next time we'll have to have a look at some other stuff we can do. There's a few tricks on camera projection that it's useful for. Uh, as I say, projecting on low res geometry or medium res geometry. Uh, you could also uh, render out a scene. But say you've got an interior scene and it's taking you 12 hours of damn render time and you really need an animation for it. If the lighting is not has not changed, you can either use a single or multiple projections and render this out and then reproject on the geometry that you had in the scene with the same camera and it will render like that, dead fast. So hopefully that's been interesting. As I say, this is a very simple version. Then we're going to look at more complex, uh, you know, iterations of this sort of thing as time goes on. The main sticking point is always going to be the assets. So I'm having to use with what I've got, basically. Uh, don't expect stuff that looks like it's just came out of a bloody Avengers film because that's not, I don't have things to get hanging about at the moment. And the stuff that I have been working on over the years is always client stuff, which I can't use or share. Right. I'm Wayne Robson. If you've enjoyed this, if I haven't, then think up somebody else's name and say that. All right. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.